Welcome to uh, MX Graph Made Simple Part 2. Uh, and this is a very simple Hello World program, that ubiquitous uh, example that just gets you basically started and the very basic fundamentals of uh, programming. So um, obviously this code is written primarily in JavaScript with a little bit of HTML and CSS thrown in. So I'm assuming you know how to use all three of those relatively well. I started out uh, a little bit ahead uh, uh, by putting together the five basic steps that we need uh, all of them in comments so the first step is going to be to set a base path then we're going to load and initialize the library itself we're going to write the code for our specific example uh, which is of course the hello world example uh, and then here we're going to deal with some of the HTML that's necessary to contain uh, this graph Let's start with the base path. That's, of course, uh, wrapped in script tags. We'll give it the type. And the base path is going to be set using MX base path. And we're going to give it the um, location of uh, where our base path should be. Of course, that depends on how you have your particular web page set up. And we have to end that off. So that's pretty straightforward. Again, that depends on uh, your, particular, um, your particular setup. Now we're going to write another script. Um, and this time, there's not going to be anything contained in it. Instead, we're going to, um, we're going to ask uh, to download uh, our source of our library. In this case, the source is going to be found at a location called source. Oops, we need a at a location called source JS MX client. And again, this is going to depend where your particular source resides relative to your file. So now we know where um, uh, where our base path is going to be. That's where you would uh, store things like, um, uh, you know, CSS uh, files or um, other JavaScript files um, relative to this particular file. And of course, um, we have our, we've downloaded our actual library. Now let's create the code itself for our particular example of MS Graph. Again, we have to wrap it in script tags. Very good. Now the first thing we're going to do is create a function that's going to do something. And this function is called main. We're going to call this function uh, from the HTML. Uh, what is it going to do something to? It's going to do something to a, uh, a variable called container, which we haven't defined yet. Now let's see what this function actually does. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check that the um, browser is able to use uh, the MX client. If it's not, we're going to have it call an error. So that's the not sign. If not, MX client is browser supported. then we're going to have a MX utility, MX utils uh, error. It's going to give us an error message. 
it says browser not supported. Considering this is supported in almost all browsers, let's be a little mean and say get a new computer fast. Obviously, we wouldn't do this in any professional setting. Very good, so that tells us if the browser is not supported. Now what if it is, which is the most likely uh, scenario. So the first thing we need to do is to create a new graph. We'll do that by calling a variable because we'll be referencing this graph many times. And we'll name it graph, which is certainly a logical name for it. And it's going to be a new instance of MX graph and it's going to be found inside of container wherever that may be excellent now we're going to allow for the rubber band selection which you'll learn more about later I'm not a thousand percent clear on it but I think it's what allows us to drag things around and they still maintain their connections let's say and this is going to be called on our variable, which is actually our graph. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to update our graph. Now, there's various ways to do this, but they suggest, and uh, again, not being section expert, uh, I can only assume I understand why, uh, which is so that there shouldn't be confusion when various uh, events are happening at the same time. So they suggest wrapping it inside of a begin update and an end update call. So we're going to start by calling on the graph get model spelled wrong begin update and they wrap it in a try uh, and the first thing we're going to do is add a vertex when we add a vertex it's very simple we're doing it inside of a variable so that we can call it later uh, and it's going to be done in relation to graph and it's a very simple command insert vertex that's pretty straightforward and obvious now where is this happening what is the parent and we're going to learn more about parents later on that happens when we're trying to organize things uh, either by groups or uh, other ways that they could be organized um, but now we're just going to call it the parent which we haven't yet um, we haven't yet uh, explicitly named Now I just uh, typed in null. Uh, that's where we would put in an ID if we wanted to manage our own IDs. But uh, if you have everything set to its default way, um, MX Graph actually will manage the IDs for you. Um, but if you want to manage your own IDs and give ID names to each of your cells, then you would have put it right there where we put the null. Uh, we would have given it an, an ID. Now here um, is where actually a lot of the genius of MX Graph happens, but we're not taking advantage of all that genius uh, right here and now. Instead, we're just going to give it a label, and that label is created by uh, putting a string here. But really, a lot of logic could go right into this spot that would give a lot more meaning to these objects. And again, that's a very important place to focus uh, once we get a little bit better at this. And now we're going to give it its x, y coordinates. And finally, we're going to give it its width and its height. Uh, there's an option when you're done with those to give it its style, but we're not going to be doing that now. Instead, it's going to get its default style. 
And now let's give it a, a friend. Doing the exact same process, we're going to insert a vertex and it's going to be inserted into parent and we're going to let it have its own ID that's created and we're only we're not going to give it any logic we're just going to give it a label and that label will be world and we're going to put this a little bit distant from the other with its XY coordinates and we'll have it the same size and there you go you have your second vertex now let's relate these two vertexes with an edge insert edge that's pretty logical again it's going to go into parent again we're not going to give it a specific ID we're going to let the program take care of that for us and now we need to, um, uh, we're not going to give it a logic either, uh, but just for the fun of it, let's give it a label. And finally, uh, we're going to tell it what it's relating from what to what. It's relating our first vertex here, V1, to our second vertex here, V2. And there you have it. Now that pretty much uh, sets up the uh, all of the insertions. So now we're going to give a finally clause. Um, and this uh, ends the update. And there you have it. Um, so that pretty much takes care of all of the programming of a very simple, straightforward uh, MX graph. Let's pull that back a little bit. Now let's get to work on some of the HTML that's going to contain this graph. We already have a body, but we're going to put an onload function. And we're going to say that it equals that means that as soon as the body finishes loading, it should do this, it should call this function. What's the function that we just wrote called? It was called main. And what are we going to call this function on? We're going to call it on a certain element in our document. Get element by ID. And that element is going to be called, which we haven't called it yet, graph container. There you have your body on load um, call. And now let's create that container. We're going to create a div uh, with the ID that we just said we were going to call it. Graph container. And this ID is going to actually be uh, empty but we're going to style it. We don't have to. We're going to hide the overflow. Let's put it, there we go. We're going to hide the overflow. We're going to give it a width. We're going to give it a height. And we're going to give it a background. Um, this background is found in source, images, And it's called grid that diff. 
me a pardon me. I'm going to move this for one second here. Okay. And that is the end of our div. Now, technically, if I spelled everything right and I didn't make any uh, mistakes, this show would be working. So let's see. I'm going to open it um, in Firefox. I like to do that because uh, that way I can debug it. And have a look at that. I must have spelled something wrong, but there at least we have our GIF um, and our div. So let's just take a quick peek um, and let's see if there are any obvious mistakes. Let's clear it. Watch it again. And it says MS graph is not defined. That means I spelled it wrong somewhere. And I probably called it MS instead of MX graph. Let's see where I would have done that. Ah, right there. Let's save it and try it again. Still no good. And here I just you look at the reference error and it says grap is not defined. Let's see where I wrote grap. Right there. A get child count is not a function. Let's see where that is happening. Uh, it looks like I forgot, there we go, I forgot to um, declare the parent. Sorry about that. graph dot get default parent and let's end it let's see how it's doing have a look at that we have hello and we have world but for some reason they're not connected let's have a peek at why graph insert edge you see i gotta learn typing insert edge and finally ta -da! there you have it your first hello world okay we have here a uh, vertex another vertex two objects one is called hello the other one's called world and they are related by an edge which we uh, labeled this is so cool you can actually drag it around a little bit and you see they're still connected and related to each other i hope you learned something and stay tuned for some more complex examples later